Greetings and welcome to Even the Ocean. I'm Catherine of Sky, and I couldn't wait to try out this game because it seems to have a really interesting uh, storyline and um, let's just hop right into it. Go for a new game. Okay, we'll go for a new game. Yes. Okay, we need to select how we want to play the game. Let's go for a full game. Yes. Okay. Yes. They want us to be really sure. <laughs> okay. I want to change the music volume down to two. And sound effects also down to two. And we'll confirm the settings. I'm just doing this because um, I tested the sound earlier and uh, you can't hear my voice if it's too loud. <laughs> okay, so alrighty, cool. Good. So we have a storyteller. Oh, hello there, human. You came to play this story called Even the Ocean, didn't you? I did promise to tell it. So tell it I will, to as many humans as possible. The world of Even the Ocean will be familiar to you in many ways. There are continents and oceans and lakes and rivers and humans and all manner of other plants and creatures as there are on your own earth. However, Integral to this world and this story are the two polarized energy types that infuse all matter. Some call them dark and light, others refer to them by their hues of purple and green. An occasional few use the mathematically derived X and Y. At varying scales, all systems are affected by their energy alignment, the proportion of one energy type to the other contained within the system. Dark energy is strongly associated with horizontal motion, light with vertical. The greater the disparity, the stronger these effects are manifest in the system. The prime example of this is White Forge City. White Forge City is the most concentrated hub of human activity in this world. Its extraordinary gravity-defying de architecture is a testament to mankind's ability to wield energy alignments on a massive scale. For this, it is sometimes called the Grand City of Light Energy. Dotting the continent at varying distances from White Forge are power plants that serve to distill or isolate the energy types into extreme concentrations for human use. Our story begins at one such power plant, located in the Fay Rouge region. Here we will meet Aleph, a newly hired power plant technician who has been sent to the Fay Rouge plant for routine maintenance, along with senior technician Cassidy. Okay, looks like we're on our journey. Act 1. Aleph's first assignment. Okay. Aha, we have a character. Maybe. Hey, rookie, what are you, taking a nap? So sorry, just resting my eyes. I feel like I'm getting a migraine. Something's not right in the air today. It just feels tense or something. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do you? I grew up near here. Actually, I was kind of glad to get this as my first assignment, since I'm familiar with the area. I used to sneak into the plant as a kid and look for the machinery that I'd read about in my copy of Large Scale Energy Management, Standards and Procedures. Although I guess I shouldn't tell you about the sneaking in part, hee <laughs> hee. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's not amused. Right, well, there's no more time for sitting around. We've got a power plant to fix. Okay. Ugh. Five minutes on the job and I'm already embarrassing myself. Well, never mind. I just need to focus on the work today. Cassidy will be okay with me if I can do the work. Cool. I like the scenery. It's kind of cool. Ah, Fay Rouge, the Hills of Red Ferns. Okay. 
I really like the, the uh, backgrounds. Oh, I can walk. Nice. Hold the X key to jump. Okay, great. Alright, let's go. Okay, when a Znok appears over your head, press the C key to interact. Okay, you may jump through thin ledge-like surfaces and then land on top of them. Okay, so it sounds like, like a platform thing. You may also drop down through them by holding the down key and pressing the X key. Okay, so it's like down jump sort of thing. Okay, great. Okay, oh, these must be the platforms. There they are. Okay, we can't jump very far, that's for sure. Nor very high. Oh! Okay, to drop through, press the down key and X. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's see. This is a save point. If you ever die or exit the game and start again later, your progress will start back from where you last saved. The game will automatically save whenever you walk onto a save point. That's nice. Also, if you stand over the save point and press the enter key, you can save to a new file. Okay. Uh, okay. Never mind. Oh, here's the save point. Okay, so I can save it. We'll just save it in zero. All right, let's keep on going. Okay. So you can jump taller or, or higher and lower if you press X longer or shorter. Okay, this is a sap pad. Stand on top and it'll transfer your energy via cable to other mechanisms. In this case, we need to send purple energy to open this purple door. Losing purple energy effectively shifts your energy balance toward green or light energy. That's why the surface of the sap pad is colored green. Don't worry your little head though, that suit will provide all the energy to the sap pad so your body's energy levels will set, stay totally safe and balanced. Go ahead and try this one out. Okay. There we go. Just have to stand. Good. I'll be up ahead. Okay. What are those? I guess I'm just walking through them. Shh. Okay. Guess they're not bothered by me walking over them. I really like the background images. They're kind of funky cool. Whoa! Okay. Had an earthquake or something. Whoa, what was that? It sounded like a huge lightning strike. Maybe an explosion? I better be careful. I think I'm gonna change the settings. I did not hear any lightning strike, so turn up the volume a bit. Okay, let's just go mix. There we go. Aleph! Oh god, he's fallen! <gasps> no! Get off the bridge! Oh no, what's... <gasps> no! Oh, he's fallen down, oh no! Oh! No! What's going on? Oh boy. I think we have our problem. Ugh. What happened? My suit is damaged? Ugh. Cassidy! Cassidy! Are you alright? No, you're... Cassidy. Oh no, he probably died. Are you okay? Okay, let's proceed. Cassidy, I'm... I'm sorry. Oh wow, this is not great. What is this? My suit is a wreck. Even the radio's busted. There'll be too much loose energy in the power plant. It'll be dangerous. But, hmm. If I take this and strap this here, I think this will work. Aleph salvages the chest piece of her suit to create a shield that will defend against various forms of energy. 
To help you learn how to play this game, I will occasionally offer some instruction pages, which you can inspect immediately or visit later by accessing the menu. Remember, you may access the menu by pressing the Enter key. Okay. Aleph's shield can be pointed up, down, left, or right by using Aleph's movement controls. For example, moving to the right will automatically point the shield to the right as well. Try pointing the shield in different directions to see how it feels. If you want to shield in one direction regardless of your movement, you may use the shield lock ability. Press and hold the C key to lock your shield in its current orientation. Okay, you can stand, lock, and then move another way. Okay, your shield will not change direction until you release the C key. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay. All right. So let's press this. Yep, works like a charm. And I guess there's no point in talking to our friend again. Okay, save point. All right, got through that pretty well. Without the protection of her work suit, Aleph is left vulnerable to hazards that can affect the energy levels of her body. Be careful as the energized pod plants ahead cannot be absorbed by your shield. If you ever need extra info on a hazard you are facing, check out the field notes in the journal section of the menu. Okay, this bar represents Aleph's energy alignment towards dark or light energy. When Aleph touches a charged object like these, her energy alignment will be affected. Okay, we have a light charge vent exhaust versus dark charge pod plants. The stronger Aleph's dark energy alignment, the faster she moves horizontally. The stronger her light alignment, the higher she can jump. Oh, that's really interesting. It's safe and often unavoidable for Aleph's energy alignment to shift around as she works. But if the bar fills completely with either energy, it's curtains for Aleph. You will have to start over from the most recently activated checkpoint. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so now I'm back centrally here. It's interesting that they affect the actual movement. It's kind of cool. The destruction of the cumbersome armor, however, also allows Aleph more freedom and mobility. Alone, she is able to deftly climb the cave walls as she had climbed while sneaking around the Fey Rouge power plant as a young person. Okay, when Aleph jumps toward a wall and touches it, she will begin sliding down along the wall's surface. If she presses away from the wall, she will fall to the ground. From this wall sliding position, Aleph can climb upward by continuing to press into the wall and jumping repeatedly. Sounds reasonable enough. There we go. Not too bad. Oh, this is really easy. Nice. Some games are so annoying with wall climbing, but this one is easy. Not only can Aleph climb walls, but she's able to jump from one wall onto another. Okay. Okay, so you can jump to a different wall or platform. You must begin moving away from the wall at roughly the same time that she jumps. Okay. Jumping off walls may seem complicated at first, but soon it will become second nature. Like holding the shift key to type a capital letter. Okay. Soon you will be able to use wall climbing and wall jumping to navigate complex terrain with ease. All right. So let's have a go with oops, this one, this key. Oops, okay. There we go. Close enough. Oh, this is interesting. Hey, this cave is attached to the power plant. And I'm pretty close to the core. With my suit's radio broken, my best bet is to do some quick repairs on the power plant's core, then use the station's high-powered radio to call for help from Whiteforge City. Sounds like a plan to me. Let's do it. Yes. 
Oh, whoops. <laughs> Just trying to correct and I overcorrected. we have. I need to go up the other side instead. I like this. The controls are really responsive in this game. Um, okay, so I think I can go downward. Nice. That was good. Oh, really? <laughs> Shoot. It's okay. No worries. Yeah, it feels really light to play this uh, character, really nice. Be like. I'm really intrigued by the story too. I keep wondering, are we gonna get out of this? Is this gonna be okay? Oh, wait, where's the exit? Here? Yes, it is, okay. So if this is a door that we cannot, oh, we have to stand on this thing. Very nice. Oh, and look, they have these safe points really often, which is a good thing. Oi! I need to get hit with a couple of these things. There we go. Uh -huh. Little too many. That's all right though. We'll get it balanced, but that's okay for now because we have the light energy vertical jumping power thing. Okay. Okay. Very nice. There we are, closer to center on the energy thing. Oh wow, this is gonna be interesting. I wonder if I can jump like this. Yes, I can! Ooh, that's very nice. Very, very cool. I'm near the core control room. It's offline as expected, but I should be able to fix this place up and contact Whiteforge. Looks like some of the delicate crystal lenses have been fried. I'll need to place the proper type of crystal lens into those receptors with the pink lasers. Okay. I can get crystal lenses from the dispensers on the ground. I'll have to be careful. If a crystal lens hits any sort of energy concentration, light or dark, it'll shatter. Ugh. Looks like there's a receptor right ahead I can repair. There should be a few others to take care of as well. All right, I think um, this looks like a new section. So I think we've run out of time for this episode, but I look very much forward to getting through this power plant in the next one. So thank you so very much for joining me. I'm Catherine of Sky. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time.